Yeah, I just wanted to do an update. Um, recently I got my uh, Octoprint set up for all three of my printers and I kind of wanted to show you a breakdown of how I did um, my Octoprint system uh, for each of the printers. Um, I wanted a uniform approach to mounting uh, a Raspberry Pi and a camera for Octoprint for each of my printers since each one is different, a different style of printer and have different mounting options. I didn't want to have to go through and actually figure out how to mount everything. Um, I'm using an IKEA um, IVAR sh shelf and uh, it's been really sturdy and modular um, and it's just uh, it's a great system and it's, it's not too expensive as well. Um, the uh, what I'm using is the um, IKEA Janso, Janjo, I can't pronounce it, but it's an L it's a really cheap LED lamp that has a metal gooseneck and a concrete base. So it's a very solid foundation um, for a lamp. And um, as you know with Octoprint and, and 3D printers, that most 3D printers are really dark because you have them on a shelf or something. These have a really, really good spotlight that has a really concentrated warm white LED um, so it's not all blown out blue um, and it has a very concentrated even spread light. Um, it's about $12 for the chrome version. They have a black and white version as well. Um, I consider this kind of IKEA hacking as well. Um, but I can show you the, uh, the breakdown of how I built the uh, Octoprint, the IKEA Octoprint system. Okay, as you can see, uh, it's this IKEA lamp that has a gooseneck. And that gooseneck is movable. And as you can see, it has a really interesting oval uh, spotlight or a circular spotlight, um, which makes it good for uh, uh, viewing your prints. Um, and so I have two cables that actually twist around the gooseneck. One is a, a micro USB cable that actually plugs in for power. And then um, I have another one that's actually attached to the printer, and it's a uh, USB on-the-go adapter, so it creates a male micro USB to a female uh, USB type A, and that goes on the printer side. Um, and then on the Raspberry Pi Zero, let me show you. Um, I'll have a link to this case design in the description. But it's essentially it's a very nice screwless design um, for the camera and uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W. So this is a Raspberry Pi Zero W. What's cool about it is it has a built-in antenna and a built-in Wi-Fi chip, um, and it's ten dollars. So it has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. It's a one gigahertz Linux computer with five twelve megabytes of RAM. Um, and it's a single core, which is plenty uh, for Octoprint. Um, of course, it has all the GPIO pins that you need, and then it runs off of a SD card. So the SD card at Micro Center, 16 gig class 10, that was six dollars. This is ten dollars, 16. The camera was actually the most expensive part. These are modules are thirty dollars for the original Raspberry Pi camera V21. This ribbon cable was. Uh, six or seven dollars. Also at Micro Center, what happens is you have to, you have to adapt the camera to a ver to a smaller uh, zip socket, um, and then um, so that goes in here like so, and it just goes in here. When I printed these cases, um, the small pegs that actually hold the uh, the Raspberry Pi in uh, broke off pretty easily, so I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I probably printed in another material. Uh, I tried it in a PETG, but it's really stringy, uh, so it might just need to be redesigned or use screws. Um, but this is a screwless design. What's cool about it is it has this retaining piece, um, and then you basically just slide this on and it has a little snap and then um, just for simplicity I actually have this thing zip tied on uh, because why why reinvent the wheel on that one uh, 
And then all you have to do is plug one of them is data, USB data, and one of them is USB power, micro USB power. And there you go. You should see a little green light in there. Uh, you can't see it from the video, but the green light um, just shows that it's reading and writing. Um, and then uh, and then the setup is very easy. So I'll show you the setup process. Okay, so so, so setting up Octoprint uh, or Octopi is actually pretty easy. If you've ever made an image for a uh, for a Raspberry Pi. Um, so if you go to the octoprint.org homepage, um, it's not directly under downloads, uh, but I went to um, octopi.octoprint.org, um, and then down here it's a mirror to the nightly builds, and then from there you can actually see the stable builds and of Octopi, and then here's all the nightly builds. So the issue I came across was that I could not get the Raspberry Pi V2 camera to initialize with the Raspberry Pi Zero. I'm not really sure what the issue is. I think it's a known issue. I think it's a known bug. Um, but what I found out is that um, from the uh, pull request is the uh, um, just to use the nightly builds. Um, so I wasn't quite sure about using nightly builds because obviously they're not as stable as the stable builds. But I gave it a shot. So um, Octopi 1.4 uh, just get the latest uh, nightly build that you can. Um, uh, so far, it's it's been pretty stable for me. Um, so I just keep using the same one. Unfortunately, you can't update it since it's a nightly build. It's not a stable release. Um, so I download that, and then um, if you've ever used this before, it's uh, called SD card formatter. Um, I'll have the link in the description below. Um, the, the trick with the SD card formatter is if you use a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff, um, they partition the SD cards and uh, they reduce the size that Windows will see. Uh, so I just go into Options, go to uh, Quick uh, Format Size Adjustment On, okay? And uh, you can label it whatever, you know, Octopi. And then you just click format. Yes, yes, it goes through, formats it as 14 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes formatted. Um, it's a class 10 card, um, 16 gigabytes. So that's all we need for that. And then uh, I use a Win32 Disk Imager. It's a pretty simple program. Uh, you just open up your your nightly build that you just downloaded. Um, there you go. And you just click right. Are you sure you want to do that? Yes. It takes a few minutes to do. So we'll wait for that. Okay, so write successful. That's good. I can exit that. Okay, so once you have your SD card formatted, um, you should see this uh, this boot uh, disk that shows up. It's a Windows partition on the uh, SD card um, that you can uh, do some config stuff with. Um, you'll see Octopi dash network. Right click and um, edit with Notepad++ or whatever your text editor you're comfortable with. Uh, notepad will not word wrap properly. So um, you see WAPA, WPA2 secured, which is what you should be using for your network, wireless network, uh, at least. Um, you'll put your SSID here, which I'm not going to show you, um, and your password as well. Um, but make sure that you remove the comments out here, these pound signals, and then put your SSID and password, and click Save. Um, and then make sure that you eject the SD card. Once you put the SD card in, if the network SSID and password is correct, um, I use this app called Fing, F-I-N-G. It's on the uh, Android store. 
I will uh, link that in the description. Um, what it does is it finds all the IP addresses on your network and the device type and the device name. And it should show up as a Raspberry Pi device. And it should uh, show as Octopi. So um, it's easy to identify. That will give you the IP address, your private IP address on your network. And then once you get that private IP address, you should be able to type it into your browser. Um, and then it will come up with a uh, wizard. So uh, let me put the, the SD card into it, the uh, Pi, and then I will show you that process. Okay, so I found my IP address. Um, I'm going to try it. Uh, so it says Octoprint is starting up. Once you, once you first boot, it does take a few minutes. Okay, so uh, sometimes it's not perfect, but um, I finally got it to load uh, just by waiting a while. Um, but I, th I think it, it takes a really long time the first time you set it up. Um, I already went through the wizard and uh, set it up, and I'll show you some of the... Um, options. Um, first of all, if you go to control, the camera should automatically be initialized. Um, and then I just kind of aim it so that it, I can see, you know, where my print's going to be pretty much the full bed when the, with the moving bed. And then kind of up to the top where the prints are going to be. Um, you can also manually control it now. Uh, you can home XY. It takes a while uh, to refresh. Um, it hasn't been real time, but um, you get the target bed and temperature for the bed and the nozzle. Um, G code viewer. You can also film time lapses. Um, and then under settings, um, you can set your printer profile. It's a generic RepRap printer, but if you wanted to set correct um, and give you warnings about the area, uh, build air area, you can put custom build area. And then for webcam, since my webcam is actually upside down, I had to flip it vertically and horizontally. Um, and then, of course, I changed the appearance. So um, I changed the title so I'll know which printer is which in the, uh, the tabs. And I changed the color to kind of match the color of the printer. Um, a lot of other cool things you can do, log, uh, check logs. Uh, there's plugins. There's a, really, a lot of really cool plugins. Um, you can have G-code script, custom G-code scripts. Um, you can detect, uh, if you have serial communication problems, you can change the interval and timeouts for USB. Um, it's a, it's a really well done package and, uh, it's, uh, I def definitely want to support continued development of this, uh, package. Um, you can also print stuff that's already on the SD card. Um, uh, it's just really hard to see because it kind of shortens the, uh, words, but... Um, but yeah, this is it. This is um, a Raspberry Pi 0W and a Pi camera running a uh, uh, all three of my printers. And all three of my printers actually have pretty much the same look. You got my CME CNC Eris and then my Mendel 90 uh, and my Prusa Mark II. Um, all of them I can see now uh, pretty quickly in real time. Uh, what I would not recommend doing, but what I have done uh, is uh, use port forwarding so that you can use your public IP address to view your Octoprint pages. Um, I would probably use a VPN so it's more secure. Um, if you use port forwarding, um, you pretty much just give anybody direct access, public access to your printer. So make sure you have a password on your access, con make sure you enable access control. And uh, I would also recommend logging into PuTTY uh, with our SSH with PuTTY and uh, changing your root password so that nobody can access your, uh, your basically become root on your Pi, which gives them complete access to the rest of your network. Um, <laughs> so definitely uh, have passwords on both of those or just use a VPN. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, subscribe. And thumbs up if you liked it and thought that was helpful. And then uh, just let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you.